Welcome to a lesson on problem solving. The goal of this video is to solve a variety of problems mathematically. Now when we start problem solving, the first step is going to be to read the question several times to understand exactly what you're looking for. Then we will assign variables to the unknowns. Then we want to set up an equation and solve. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first example. Six fewer than four times a number is 78. Find the number. So we have to represent six fewer than four times a number. Well, let's start with how we would represent the number. Let's let x equal the number we're looking for. Next, we want six fewer than four times this number x. Well, let's start with four times a number. Well, that would be 4x. But we want six fewer than four times a number. So six fewer than 4x would be 4x minus six. And is means equals 78. So here's our equation. Again, six fewer than four times some number x. So now we need to solve this equation. So the first step, because there's no fractions, decimals, or parentheses, is to add or subtract in order to start isolating the variable x. So we'll add 6 to both sides, which would give us 4x equals 84. This is a task by multiplication, so we'll divide both sides by 4. And we have x equals 21. And to check this, 4 times 21 would be 84 minus 6 equals 78, and that checks. Moving along, the units in Shantae's apartment complex are consecutively numbered on each floor. The sum of her number and her next door neighbor's number is 443. What are the two numbers? Well, first, let's talk about consecutively numbered. That essentially means that if one of the doors is 22, the next door would be 23. Or if one of the doors was 45, the next door would be 46. So we need to represent this relationship using variables. So if x equals the first number, then the pattern that we see here is we have to add 1 to get to the next consecutive number. So x plus 1 would equal the second number. Next, to form our equation, it says the sum of her number and the next number is 443. Well, sum means addition. So our equation is going to be the first number plus the second number must equal 443. So there's our equation to solve. Let's do the first step by combining our like terms. So our equation becomes 2x plus 1 equals 443. Let's take this over to the next screen. Now we have our basic two-step equation, so we will subtract 1 on both sides. Divide by 2. We have x is equal to 221. Now be careful. Let's go back and read the question again. What are the numbers? So we found x, or we found the first number. But the second number was x plus 1. So the numbers would be 221. And the next one would be x plus 1, or 222. So those are the numbers we're looking for in this question. Let's go ahead and try another. Sunset Scenes prints digital photos for 12 cents each, plus $6.29 shipping and handling. Your weekly budget for the school yearbook is $25. How many prints can you have made if you have $25? Well, let's start off by letting x equal the number of prints. So the total cost is going to equal 12 cents for every print. Well, that would be 12 cents times x plus the shipping and handling cost of $6.29. So the equation that we want to solve, since we have $25 to spend, 
we want to set this expression for cost equal to 25. Now we could multiply by 100 to clear the decimals, but since we're going to use the graphing calculator, let's go ahead and just do this in its current form. First step, we would subtract 6.29. This would give us 0.12x is equal to 18.71. Again, you can check this on the graphing calculator if you wish. Let's take this over to the next screen. So we have 0.12x equals 18.71. To solve for x here, we have to divide. So we'll divide by 0.12 on both sides. This would simplify to x equals Let's go ahead and get our graphing calculator out. So we can take 18.71 and divide by 0 0.12. So we have x is approximately 155.92. But remember that x was the number of prints. And of course, we cannot order a fraction of a print. So in this case, we would round down. And so our final answer would be 155 prints. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more question. The perimeter of a standard basketball court is 268 feet. The length is 34 feet longer than the width. So that's key. We need to express this relationship. So this is 34 feet longer than this. So if we let this equal x, this would have to be x plus 34. And of course, the opposite sides are equal. Now remember, when we talk about perimeter, it's the distance around the outside. And we're given that the perimeter is 268 feet. So the equation would be the sum of these four sides must equal 268. Well, if we sum these four sides, you can see there are four x's. We'd have four x, and we also have two thirty-fours, thirty-four plus thirty-four would be sixty-eight, must equal two hundred sixty-eight feet. So let's go ahead and solve this. Subtract sixty-eight on both sides. This comes out to two hundred. We'll divide by four. Again, the most challenging part is setting it up. We have x equals fifty. Now again, we need to make sure we answer the question. The question is find the dimensions of the court. The width is equal to x. Well, x is 50. So the dimensions would be 50 feet by, and the length is x plus 34. 50 plus 34 would be 84. So the dimensions of the basketball court would be 50 feet by 84 feet. I hope you found this video helpful.